Welcome friends. In this video, we'll be talking about three important terminologies which are very very important for evolution biology as well as it is important for the bioinformatics studies. So I'm making this video which will fulfill both the cases. We need to understand the concept of homolog, analog and xenolog. So let's begin. Now in all these cases you must understand the first important concept of evolution that means uh, evolution means definitely we are having a common ancestor and from that common ancestor a new uh, species emerges right for example say this is the common ancestor now it it emer it goes and it divides into two different parts so another common ancestor here now it divides into branches now here it is this is this should be a common ancestor it divides another so it's simply grow and branching so it's it's evolution always works like that so definitely if you look this is organism uh, one this is organism two now this between these two organisms there is a common ancestor and this is this this region this is the common ancestor for both this organism 1 and 2 okay so that's how evolution works always now using this term, uh, important concept we'll be seeing the importance of homolog analog and xenolog so let's begin now here in homolog what we mean by homolog homo means that is same right and logy means uh, the relationship so the relationship that we are looking at for homology is the same type of relationship that means if you look at the origin which is same will be called the homologous right so if we take two individual definitely whatever we are using the term homology analogy or xenology we are uh, talking about at least two individuals to compare or two organisms to compare right so if we are having organism a and organism b if we are having these two things organism a and b now homology means the origin for a particular thing for both these organisms are same so similar origin will be called as homology now here we can see the beautiful example of homology if you give if i give you the example that Yes, if you look for uh, the arm uh, or, uh, of, uh, mou uh, of mouse, then uh, a human arm and also the bat wing, all of them. You can see that, that the structure of all this is remarkably similar because it is having the same number of uh, uh, bones and also a similar type of bones and same type of texture of the bones, slightly different in wings and all these things. But all of them are give rise from a particular common ancestor that's why we are having a homology that means the similarity in their origin in all this case right so that's why they are called the homologous organs right so how homologous organs generated so if you think this is a common ancestor so here it is the common ancestor at the middle now it branched out to form two different uh, individuals individuals a and b now these two individuals as they are having a common ancestor so they will be related to this common ancestor right so that's why it will be called the homologous to both of them for example if we are talking about suppose here you are talking about the arm or fall limb or wing whatever so if you are talking about this arms uh, arm regions or bone regions the, uh, so bone of this a and b will be extremely similar to each other because they are originated from the same ancestor that's how homology homology generally generates okay now on the other hand if we talk about analogs analogy means as you can see here it is also similarity so we are always talking about homology analogy and xenology everything is all about similarity homology means similarity in origin but analogy means similarity in function but it may differ in the origin so if you look at the uh, analogy here so if the analogy or analogous means you can see here two separate individuals so the common ancestor is totally different for both of them so it it, it not uh, it is not a simple single common ancestor unlike this uh, homologous because in homology it emerges from a particular point so it's a divergent evolution right that means from a point it is diverging but for analogy it is a parallel kind so we can find a common ancestor from where both of these uh, organism a and b are generated now they are generated from two different individuals but what we are having we are having similarity in the functions in them for example we can take this butterfly wing bird wing and a bat wing all of three all of them are having a same type of function which help the individual to fly right bird wing helps it to fly uh, butterfly so as uh, for the bat but the origin of them are different because this uh, or obviously the structure of them is different and the origin is also different because a bird wing is completely different it is made up with this kind of structure bone structure butterfly wing is completely different made up with different things not bones and bat wing is made up with simply what we know is skin right it's, a, it's an extension of the skin so that is the difference but all of them are having a same function so that means the similarity in the function but difference in the origin and structure it will be called analogy or analogous okay 
Now let's move to the detailed concept of homologue. Now if you talk about homologue, we can divide this homology or homologous organs into two different types. One is orthologue, another one is a paralogue. Now what we mean by orthologue? Now let's look at this picture. Now suppose this is an example, otherwise it will be difficult for you to understand. So it's a, say, it's an early globin gene. We don't know the globin gene, whether it is a, a simple globin gene. It's called a globin gene or G gene, right? Now this gene is getting duplicated in the common ancestor, in the earlier ancestor. Now as this gene is duplicated, it makes a copy, two copy of it. One copy is termed as alpha chain, another one, uh, copy is termed as beta chain. Early there is only one chain, but now it is divided into two different because it is having gene duplication, one alpha, one beta. Now okay now what we can have that this alpha chain can be present in frog it can be present in cheek it can be present in mouse due to speciation so let me write it here speciation is also a fact here after speciation what we can see this alpha gene can be present in frog cheek mouse in different species as well as the beta gene can also be found in mouse cheek and frog right but now what we will be calling or uh, we'll be calling paralog is simply the part of the gene duplication. For example, if we talk about mouse cell, let's say if we're talking about mouse cell. So inside the mouse, suppose this is the ancestor. Now in this mouse, there was only one gene for globin, that is G. Now it is getting duplicated. It forms two uh, chain. One is alpha, one is beta. Now the mouse having the alpha will be, uh, and the mouse having the beta, both of them are the same organism, which is mouse, but having two different due to gene duplication only. And it gives rise to mouse alpha and mouse beta globin chain. So this mouse, mouse alpha and mouse beta globin chain will be called paralogues of each other. They will be called paralogues of each other. Okay. Now let's uh, go to the ortholog. Now say suppose this gene duplication happens. Alpha and beta chains are produced. Now this alpha chain, suppose it's the alpha chain that is getting produced, is transferred due to gene transfer from mouse to many other type of organisms like frog, cheek and, uh, cheek and other organisms, right? So now as it is transferred uh, to frog, cheek and all these things, so we not only found this alpha chain on mouse, but also you'll find it in frog and cheek. Now, those uh, globins, that means uh, all of them will be alpha globin, but as they are carried by different organisms, they will be called orthologs. That means orthologue means we are having same type of chain carried by different individuals but paralogous means we are having different uh, type of gene or duplicated gene carried by same type of organism right and paralogy is a result of simple gene duplication but orthology is a result of speciation that is the important point because orthologous means same type of chain in different uh, species but paralogous means different gene in the same species or the duplicated form of the gene. So, paralogy is a result of gene duplication, orthology is a uh, result of speciation. Okay. Now, the third uh, important thing is xenologue. Now, xenologue, it's again a similarity. So, we are talking about only similarities between gene and genomes. Now, similarity between distantly related organisms. Now, uh, what we are talking about, if we look at this, uh, this particular diagram, that you can see here is a dendrogram-like structure, and you can see this individual at this point, and this individual at this point, they are far distantly related, like, uh, because in, in this uh, history, evolutionary history, they are far, dis far distantly related. But what is, what we are looking at there, that they are having similarity in some gene or in some protein coding sequence. They are having the similarity. And why they are having similarity? Because they are having the transfer of some gene, right? Because the genes are getting transferred from one individual to another individual, which are separated by long evolutionary gap, right? So this is a long evolutionary gap, but still genes are getting transferred somehow. We don't know how. There are mechanisms of that. Uh, if you want to understand, you can search internet and you can find different uh, mechanisms of how they transfer. Uh, usual transfer is uh, horizontal gene transfer. You can find videos about horizontal gene transfer in my YouTube channel also. Now, due to this horizontal gene transfer, these genes are transferred from distantly related species in evolutionary history. As a result of that, it gives rise to similar type of genes present in different organisms, but they are uh, uh, distantly related, right? So, those individual uh, genes are called xenologues of each other, okay? So that is what is called genologue. So it's all, again homologue, ortho, analog, and xenologue, whatever, all of them are about similarities but in different ways. Okay, so that's it, and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.